Okay, so we did discuss the benefits of CO2 to plants and generally speaking to the human race and the globe in general. There's no real negatives for having double the CO2. However, humanity has taken upon itself to raise CO2 as a net negative, as declaring CO2 as a dangerous uh, greenhouse gas. And so what we should explore at this point, segue into the climate change theory, the basic, one of the basic elements of the theory, foundation element, is that CO2 is a greenhouse gas. When we don't have a greenhouse, per se, and, uh, and we have a trace gas of CO2. So let's discuss that. Okay, well look, um, CO2 really is a greenhouse gas, and so let me explain what a greenhouse gas is. I may have mentioned it earlier, but a greenhouse gas is a gas which you can see the sun through with uh, complete transparency, but which will uh, keep you from getting warm from your fireplace. So it absorbs thermal radiation, but it does not absorb visible radiation. And CO2 is like that, water vapor is like that, nitrous oxide, methane, ma many uh, molecular gases are like that. Uh, but lots are not. For example, the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen in two, two nitrogen atoms stuck together. That is not a greenhouse gas because it, it doesn't absorb sunlight and it also doesn't absorb thermal radiations. You can put all the nitrogen you like between yourself and your fireplace and it won't keep you from getting toasty warm from the radiant heat from the fire. Um, Greenhouse gases were first discovered by uh, an Irish, uh, English, uh, Anglo-Irish uh, physicist, John Tyndall, uh, in the 1850s. And he was a very good experimenter. And uh, one of the things that was the secret to his success was that he had excellent uh, detectors of uh, thermal radiation. They had first learned how to build uh, thermal piles, you know, a bunch of thermocouples in series, and so you can add up the temperature sensitivity of as many as you like. He had dozens of them hooked together. So he was able to see the tiny heating from small changes in infrared, you know, thermal radiation on this instrument. And he noticed that if you take a long pipe and you fill it, fill it with CO2 and on one end of the pipe, you, you put a, um, a hot kettle, you know, like you'd make tea from, very appropriate for an Anglo-Irish physicist, uh, uh, that uh, you can feel the heat with this instrument, the thermal pile, uh, just fine if the pipe is filled with ordinary air, but if you put in CO2, then the heat stops. So that's the basic way the experiment worked. You know, so he was sensing the, the transmission of heat. He didn't measure any warming of the gas. You can't measure the warming of the gas. It's, it's too small to measure. When people tell me about all this, you know, Emily Foote or whoever, it's complete nonsense. It's, it's physically impossible to measure any warming that way. You know, the, the numbers don't add up. Uh, but uh, he did it right. and. Um, and so sure enough, CO2 is opaque to thermal radiation. Water vapor is even more opaque, and uh, uh, methane, uh, uh, ethylene. Ethylene was the champion gas that he worked on, but there's not much ethylene around to worry about. Uh, so it's true that CO2 uh, does uh, uh, hinder transmission of thermal radiation. So other things being equal, if you put some CO2 over the hot surface of the ground, the, the ground normally cools by radiating to space, and the CO2 will intercept some of this radiation, so it might be a little harder for the ground to radiate out to space because some of the CO2, uh, some of the energy absorbed by the CO2 by radiation is radiated back to the ground, so it, it has to be a little hotter to get rid of the solar heating. So that, that's the way it works, and uh, all right, so uh, CO2 and other greenhouse gases do uh, hinder the cooling of the earth, 
not very much, but even more importantly, they've done about all the hindering that they can easily do now. So it almost doesn't matter if you double CO2 or have CO2 because it, it, if you look at its effect, it's something that if uh, effect goes up this way and CO2 goes this way, it's something where the amount has grown and saturated. So you, you're in a region where if you double or triple it, it hardly makes any difference to the warming effect. So it's in the saturated region, very much in a saturated region. Uh, result, you know, following from the calls. CO2, um, if you double it, uh, hinders the escape, and you don't do anything else. You keep the atmosphere at the same temperature. You don't change convection or anything else. You know, it just makes one or two percent difference in the amount of heat reaching uh, outer space. And uh, so there's no way you can get more than uh, about a degree of centigrade from that effect directly. And yet you have this alarmist establishment saying, you know, if you double CO2, it's going to be at least two and a half degrees is the latest number. You know, for a year or two, they were embarrassed enough to lower it to one and a half because they knew it was too big. But now they've gone back to line. And um, maybe it's 10 degrees, you know, it's just completely absurd. How can you turn, you know, one degree at most into 10 degrees? It, you can't do it. It's a, you can do it by lying about it. That's how you do it. <laughs> so uh, even scientists, you know, they're, scientists in many ways are most to blame because uh, at least physicists, electrical engineers, uh, should know enough about, uh, you know, radiative transfer and feedback or be able to learn enough about it to realize that, um, you know, this doesn't make any quantitative sense. But yet, qualitatively, because uh, CO2 is a greenhouse gas and greenhouse gases cause warming, somehow they've been able to uh, convince themselves that this trivial and probably beneficial warming you know, will become some horrible, you know, runaway warming, which uh, uh, will not happen. There's no way it can happen based on the laws of physics. And then, you know, they talk to unsophisticated audiences, say, I, I remember a, a distinguished uh, uh, member of the academy saying, I don't want the Earth to turn into Venus, you know, as though Venus were hot, you know, because of all the CO2. It's true. Uh, Venus atmosphere is um, nearly 100% CO2, but it's also, you know, a lot closer to the sun than we are. <laughs> so it gets twice as much sunlight. <laughs> and the atmospheric pressure is also, you know, a hundred times what it is and on Earth. And uh, that also makes a difference because uh, much of the temperature difference between the surface of the Earth and the tropopause, you know, where there's convection of uh, rate of air, is due to the pressure, you know. It, it's because when you decompress something, it cools, or if you compress it, it heats. So everything about Venus makes perfect sense, but it has nothing to do with more CO2, per se. It's because of the high pressure and because of being closer to the sun. <laughs> And yet, yet, you know, scientists stand up knowing that nobody in the public will realize that they're lying to them, and they simply lie. And the public says, oh, well, that sounds pretty good. I don't want to turn into Venus either. Yeah, let, let's uh, stop using fossil fuels. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so anyway, CO2 has, let's, let's sort of summarize yeah. with the time we have. So CO2, net benefit, not so, so much a net negative. So your summary. I think everything about more CO2 is strongly positive for humanity. Uh, there is the indirect effect that it's clearly positive for plants, which, which uh, you know it has to be true because otherwise greenhouse operators wouldn't use it. That has no political agenda at all. They just want to get results. So that, that, that's about as, you know, the... Uh, uh, motive of greed is one of the purest in the world. You can understand it completely. <laughs> There's never any hinder, hidden agenda there. And so I, I've always taken that, you know, very seriously. But, but then the other point is that just the direct warming, it probably will cause a little warming. Nobody knows how much. I'd be surprised if it's more than a degree, probably less. 
But uh, everything about warming is good. You know, you look at the COVID uh, death rate has dropped to practically zero now because it's warm. And, uh, but it's, it's high in Melbourne and in, in Australia because it's winter there, you know. And so if you look at death rates all over the world, they always increase when it's cold and they get better when it gets warm. So why am I worried about warming? You know, and, and the, these warmings, by the way, are huge. You know, we're talking about many tens of degrees, uh, you know, not, not one degree or two degrees. And so I have these people who tell me that, you know, the end of the world is coming because you might get a, a degree or two of warming, and yet every 20 or 30 degrees of warming between winter and summer re reduces the death rate, you know. So what am I missing here? <laughs> I'm not missing anything, they're lying. <laughs> yeah. So we could say then, in summary, that the greenhouse gas effect with CO2 is really a measure of the greed that's at place, not CO2. Well, I think the alarmism is, is driven by uh, m many motives, uh, uh, greed being one of them for sure. Uh, we, that's the one I understand best, you know. And, uh, but. It's not just greed for money, it's greed for uh, academic fame and uh, grants, uh, for political power, for... So it, it has gone well beyond, uh, you know, filthy lucre. And, um, and it's quite dangerous, you know, because uh, you're greedy and the way you uh, make money is you produce a better product, you know, that people can afford better and so they buy more and you make some money from it. You know, that's fine. That is good for humanity. So in, in its right place, I think greed is good for humans. But, you know, when it's uh, something that has to be bolstered by uh, deceit and, and dishonesty, you know, that, that's uh, very, very dangerous. And uh, there are many examples of that in history. And uh, let, let's not let this one become another. <laughs> you know. Well, I wish we had more time to get into the climate yeah. modeling, which is the other major leg, if you will, or tenet of the so-called climate change alarmism. And then, of course, the, the very rich topic in these days is the politics of it all and how scientists have operated without the scientific method in ways that we hate to see. So, Professor Happer, I want to thank you so much for the time we spent here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. gotten used to lying, you know, they, I mean, for example, there was this experiment that Bill Nye did, you know, that, oh, yeah. it was awful, you know, it was really yes. just so disgraceful, you know, you should be in jail. For yes, yes, cheating, actually, Anthony, what, completely documented. Yeah.